Hello and welcome to the North American Guitar Showroom at Costal Guitars in Phoenix, Arizona with the one and only Mr. Jason. This is the satellite office. I know. <laughs> so we are, um, we've done a shop tour. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, specced a whole bunch of guitars that's going to be coming in uh, in 2019. We've dressed down a little bit. We've dressed There's down. There's no three-piece suits this. and sweaters and ascots and stuff here. It's a little hot outside <laughs> for that, I must be honest. Um, but uh, yeah, I couldn't believe how hot it was actually. It's all I kept on saying to everybody was like, guys, this is the winter temperature, you know, yeah, it gets a lot hotter. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, we, are, we, we had some lunch and we were talking about, uh, because we're going to do an interview with you um, later on, and we were talking about uh, achievements. And one of the things that uh, I know that we are the most proud of, and I'm sure you are incredibly proud of, yeah. is the fact that you are a permanent feature at MIM. Yeah, the Musical in, Instrument Museum. In yeah. MIM, rather. Yeah. Um, and I'm more of a clown at the front door. <laughs> you're like, oh, look at Jason, but inside the museum. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> but but, but what's, what's really beautiful, and we see it, you know, you know, is the amount of pictures and selfies you get of people with your guitar yeah. in the museum, sending them to yourself. Yeah. And uh, that kind of got my brain uh, thinking a little bit of, you know, let's, we like to try to uh, encourage our luthiers to um, bring in something really special, you know. Uh, and uh, so I was, so from when we were talking, talking, I was thinking, oh, that would be really cool. So when we got back to the shop, I said, have you got any really great sets of, of maple? And you went, boy, do I. <laughs> so uh, we, I said, how would you feel about um, recreating right. that guitar? Uh, for, for us at the North American Guitar and uh, you said yeah sure let's pick some wood now I'm a massive fan of, of jumbos as we know we've done yep. a video of that in the past talking <laughs> about that um, but I'm also a, a massive fan of maple and I have to say I'm looking at this set of wood and before we turn the camera on I, I think this is the most spectacular set of maple I have ever seen I have never seen a quilt like this it reminds me of the tree. I mean, it really, yeah. it really does. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to let you just talk us through what we've got coming yeah. next year with the so, guitar. The guitar that you alluded to um, is guitar number 52. And that was a personal project for me. I, I don't know where I first saw it, but I had this desire to build a black and white themed guitar. A lot of people have done it. They've done it very well. I've just always liked the visual contrast of black and white. And um, when I was at Irvin's, I started thinking about, you know, I want to build this guitar. He had pictures of a quilted maple. Uh, it might have actually been a jumbo, but a guitar that he had done a couple years ago before I arrived. And I, it just, everything about it really appealed to me. And when I set out to build that guitar, um, it was just a very special moment for me. And uh, interesting story, I don't tell this story a lot, but I, I built that guitar, I took it to the Woodstock show, and it was not for sale. It was my personal guitar. I just wanted to show people it. I was so proud of it. And I had somebody that come, came up and basically said, I, I'm going to buy that guitar. I said, well, it's not for sale. And they said, okay, I'm going to buy this <laughs> guitar. It's like, it's, it's not for sale. Okay. I'd like to buy this guitar. <laughs> and this went on and on all weekend long. And to the part where it was kind of like a joke. And then at the end of it, he was like, I'm buying this guitar. So let's figure this out. And again, uh, you know, kind of that whole thing of like the guitars are meant to be played. Mm. Did I really need something even as though I was so proud of it? Do I need something that's going to hang on the wall? And mm. so I ultimately sold it. The very next day I regretted it. Mm. And, and was just like, I can't believe I did that. I, that was a really bad decision on my part. A year later, the client called and said, um, I am interested in getting a Brazilian rosewood guitar from you. And I think I'm going to sell the jumbo in order to fund that. And I said, I'll buy it from you. Like, I'll take it back. Like, send it to me. And so I got reconnected with this guitar oh, amazing and it was such a, a magical moment for me to have it back in my life i was so proud of it and i had two guitars that had been on display at the musical instrument museum and they were temporary three-year uh loans mm -hmm. so um this guitar that i had at the time was a double o 
and I knew it was going to be coming back to me. And the director of the museum contacted me and said, "Would you be willing to to have a you know a guitar on permanent display?" And as hard as it was at that point in my career, that guitar had been kind of the poster child for everything I had done to that point. You know, it had the creative end graft and back strip and had the beautiful wood, the contrast colors and everything else. And I just thought of any guitar that I want out there representing my work, that was it at the yeah. time. And so I said, yeah, I'll, I'll do it. And that's the guitar that ended up there. So I get to visit it all the time, yeah. but it's behind glass. And I'm kind of like, eh, I want to touch it's it. Such you know? a great um, story, Jason. But it's, it's a guitar that I built for me. I, there was... Nobody had any input. Nobody was like, here's what I want you to do. It was me following every aspect of my heart and my passion for the guitar and creating that. So when you reach out to me and said, hey, I want to do kind of a something that is symbolic or, or hearkening to that guitar, I can't tell you how much that meant to me because, again, we're talking about a build that I, you know, I put everything I am into that. So to be able to do that again and try that again and also have it out there for somebody to enjoy. Yeah. I've gotten over the initial, like, oh, I can't <laughs> believe it, and, you know, I let it go. So I feel like I can maybe let this yeah, one go. Well, you know. But what's really cool is this is a sister set to that. And so- I did not know yeah, that. So I the, did not you know, know You've that. got the beautiful pillow quilting, you know, the kind of the, you said it looks like a mountain range. And, it's just... and it is, it's exceptional in every way. And, and you know, looking at it without the finish never does it justice because part of what the finish does is it adds depth yeah. and what we call chatoyance. And so the light is coming through and hitting the top of the finish and then refract refracting and angling slightly and then it comes back and reflects and that creates the shimmery depth. Yeah. So under finish, I mean, this thing's going to just be mind boggling. If this is what it looks like, you know, yeah, dry, dry, <laughs> under finish, it's going to be yeah, quite yeah. unbelievable. And I and think it, having that, that, having that black. Yeah. And there's some amazing techniques that like the people at Paul Reed Smith and Nick Huber and mm -hmm. people that do with, deal with quilted maple all the time have mm -hmm. come up with some techniques to make the grain pop even mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, doing that to augment this, mm -hmm. like, I, I think it's going to be just absolutely breathtaking when it's all finished. Oh, wow. And, you know, one of the things that when I built that jumbo, maple is one of those woods where it just has kind of a reputation. Because looking at it. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, people just make the assumption it's going to sound a certain way. And one of those things is we make the assumption because it's used in arch tops and stuff like that, that's very bright, yeah. no bass end, you know, and everything else. And when I built that guitar, I'd say 90% of the people who played it, the first words out of their mouth was, I didn't know a maple guitar could do this. Mm. And that made me feel really good because it meant that I was making a guitar that was well balanced and, and did everything people wanted to do and it made them look at maple in a completely new way. Yeah. And that's what I want to do with this is, you know, build this beautiful guitar. It's going to be visually stunning. Yeah. You can't, I can't screw this up with yeah. this quality of yeah. wood. But what I want to do is be able to show the tonal palette that this guitar is capable of. And I just can't wait to do that again. And, and again, you know, I'm so honored to, to have that guitar on display. It says that my legacy and the instruments that I build will be on display long after I'm gone. Mm. And I can't even tell you what that means to me. Okay. But it also means that that guitar is kind of locked up and, and you know, it's not being enjoyed. So this is my opportunity now to take what I learned from that experience, build an even better guitar, and and put it out there in the world. And I, man, I can't wait. This is and this, this is, is going to be like one of those emotional yeah. you know, builds where you know you're like, hey, send me pictures. I'm like, I can't. I cried all yeah, over yeah. the and <laughs> This this sister set is very excited. Um, but you're right. You know that 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 lower back, that big lower bout. You're going to get all of the volume and the depth that you want, and also being maple, you're going to get huge yeah. shimmery trebles. It's going to oh, it's just going to be. I can hear it. I yeah. can hear it already. It wants to sing. Yeah, it really does. Wow. Okay. So, God, I'm getting emotional on that. One. <laughs> uh, for more information on the finest handbuilt lithium instruments, then please do subscribe to this channel. But for more information on this maple jumbo from Jason Costell of Costell Guitars. Please do not hesitate to get in touch.